Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'll show you how we can use Azure Cosmos DB in our .NET Core 2.2 REST API project. The reason I, I want to show you a NoSQL database in this case is because you already have seen now how we can use ND Framework Core um, with a, a relational database and I want you to have this spherical view of other things that actually exist out there. So for that reason, I will use the exact same code, the exact same code base, sorry, to uh, show you how we can use a NoSQL database to have the exact same output. And that's actually going to be very simple because we have an interface and the only thing we really need to do is create a post service that uses Cosmos DB instead of an um, entity framework. So for that reason, I'll create a new service and the name will be, in this case, Cosmos Post Service. It's worth saying that we won't actually continue our project with Cosmos DB. We will actually continue with NT Framework Core. But I still want you to see how this is done, just in case you want to go with another option. So we have our service here, and we're going to implement the methods of this interface. The reason why this is very important as well, as a, as a lesson, as a tutorial, is because it shows you how you can have interchangeable services easily with your DI framework. And I'll show you what that means in a second. So we have this now and we're going to have to implement. We're going to have to use a library and uh, in this case I am actually the creator of one of the uh, libraries for Cosmos DB. So if we go ahead and search for Cosmonaut, you find this library here. Let's go ahead and install it. We're going to add this, accept, and we're also going to add the dependency injection extension. Okay, so now we have Cosmonaut in our project. What we first need to do is we need to create an installer to register our Cosmos DB instance. Cosmos DB works in the same way that you know DB set works in anti framework. In Cosmos DB, this is called an I Cosmos store. It's an interface. So if I create this class called Cosmos Installer, and I need to implement the I Installer interface, all good. The next step is. I need to create configurations for it. So we have an object called Cosmos Store Settings, and it's going to be a new Cosmos Store Settings object. And we need three things database name, endpoint URL, and auth key, and also some other things. So let's go ahead and add them here in our configuration. So Cosmos Settings. And let's say the database name, then account URI, and then account key. For this scenario, we use the emulator. So the URI would be this. Cosmos DB comes with an emulator, uh, a local one, so you can just use that. And for name, I will use the REST API tutorial name. We will need to be able to access this, however, in our code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say configuration and then Cosmos settings database name. So let's break this down like this. And then we need the REST. So two, three. Let's just copy these over. Endpoint URI and account key. They go here. Awesome. And the last thing we want to add is the connection policy. We're going to set it to direct. Connection mode to direct and uh, connection protocol to TCP. That's going to offer better performance. And what we want to add is services dot add cosmos store that's coming from the extensions. We're going to add it for post. 
and then we need the settings here so cosmos store settings now even though i could use the same object i will not i will create a different object for this scenario because i want to de decorate it with uh, specific attributes so let me create a new object here and let's name it cosmos post dto good enough and what this will have is basically the same things so an id and a name but cosmos db doesn't have the guid con concept it has a a string so we're going to use that we're also going to specify this as the cosmos partition key so the id will be our partition key and if you really want to see more about Cosmos DB, let me know in the comments down below and I'll, I'll show you more because there's so much to be said about this technology. We can specify the name of the collection we want, so Cosmos Collection Posts. Um, and that's it. Let me also just um, add the JSON property attribute here. You don't need it, but it's good to have. So I'll add this here. And this will just register the Cosmos store. So what this allows us to do is come here and say, I, I have a private read-only iCosmos store of Cosmos post DTO. And then I can do things here. So what I'm going to do is first change every single one of these methods to async. So one, two, three, four, and five. And now let's see how Cosmos uh, deals with uh, this method. So post from the database you can get by doing Cosmos store dot query. And then because we want everything, you can use the to list async method, but make sure it's coming from Cosmo not not empty framework if you use the wrong ones they won't actually work and then to return this we want to do a post dot select so we're going to map them here that's all we want to do new post and the id equals to x dot id but this is a guid dot pass and then also name equals to x dot name and then to list and this will return the, the a list of posts from cosmos db and we have to do the same for every other method so in order to create one we need a cosmos post so new cosmos post dto here and this will be id equals post dot id to string And then name equals post.name. And in order to add, all we do is cosmos store.add async and then the entity. So cosmos store. And we can say, so we get a response of our response equals this. And return response dot is success so if it is it's updated if not uh, it isn't in order to read in this case we have a partition key which is the id so we can do a direct read here this is where cosmos db really performs and that's very good so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say return await find a sync and we're gonna say post dot to string and then we specify the partition key as well so post dot to string but this however is still a cosmos post so we're gonna have to map that of course if post equals null then return null and then do new cosmos oh sorry new 
pass and then I GUID is GUID.pass of pass.id common name equals pass.name. Easy peasy, two to go. Let's just change this to a ternary as well. Updating is similar to create and so is delete. Well, delete is actually simpler. So again, we have the post that we want to update. So post to update. And then we change this to update async. And this is going to be updated now automatically. If it is updated, we're going to get success. If not, failure. And last but not least, deleting. That's probably the simplest. We can simply do cosmos.remove by ID and then post ID to string. And same goes for here when it specified the partition. Now, oh, and of course, we need to return the status. So our response equals this. Is success. So now we have a service that looks like matches the contract of the i post service so it should just work if we replace the previous service with this let's let's take a look here and see how that works so if i go to the db installer and i comment out this line i can register i'm going to add it as singleton because you're recommended to add this as a singleton for cosmos db so we're going to add the post service but it doesn't implement this it implements cosmos post service and in the emulator here, I have this database which is empty. And if I refresh this, you can see there's nothing in it. So before we see that, let's see one of the mistakes I made. So I said this is Cosmos Store of Post. This should be Cosmos Store of Cosmos Post uh, DTO. So Another thing we need to deal with here is that even though Cosmos DB supports automatic creation of a GUID when you insert it, it's not default. So in my scenario, I'll just do a GUID dot new GUID for creation, and then I'm gonna to string it to get the string value. And they, this just work exactly the same as before. Last but not least, beforehand the, the post ID would actually be set by entity framework. In this case, it's not. So once we actually create the post, what I wanna do is I wanna say post dot ID equals response dot um, entity and then get the ID from that and let me just create a new good from it so and I just need to set the cosmos post one here so cosmos post dot ID as a good okay so let's run this and see what, what's happening. Here we go, I have our service running. Now the first request I expect it to take like four seconds to run because it's initializing uh, all the collections and all that we didn't create manually. But now every other request is super fast. And you can see it's an empty array. And that's because now our collection is created, there are no documents in, in the collection we have our provisioning properly. So, okay, let's go ahead and create a post then. And let's say mix first Cosmos post. And we have this created here. Let's take a look in the database. So if I refresh this, as you can see, we have our object created. So if we try to read it, it's coming back. If we try to update it, next edited post, it is actually updated and you can see that here if we reselect it, it's now changed. And last but not least, well actually it is least, <laughs> uh, we have deleting. So deleting 204, so if I refresh that here, you can see it's no longer here. So. This is what I want to show you here, how just by changing a few lines of code in a few places and adding an other implementation of our service provider or our, our service itself, we can have multiple ways to store objects. And I highly recommend taking a look in Cosmos DB. It's a great service. 
Um, the Cosmonaut project will be on the description down. If you want to leave a star, it's been about a year I'm developing it, and only now it started getting more track. And I'm really proud of this project, so if you want to support me, feel free to do that. Leave a like if you like this video, and subscribe if you like more content like this. Also, suggest other topics if you want in the comments down below. I will cover them as long as they can be within the REST API development um, spectrum. So, yeah, thanks for everything. Thanks for all the subscriptions. Almost a thousand subscribers now. I'm so, so thankful to all of you who is watching the video videos. And um, don't forget, keep coding.